All right, Paul, so you showed us that around every star, there is a zone of habitability where if there's a planet there, like the Earth, it's quite likely it will have the conditions for life to be able to exist as we know it. Which leads on to the next term in the Drake equation, the next big uncertainty. Let's say you have a planet that's just right. Lovely little oceans, right temperature, nothing too hot, nothing too cold. Is life going to get started? This is a really big uncertainty. All oh, right. And so presumably once you get life started, though, uh, then we're set because evolution will take over and we're going to get you know, new and interesting things out of that beginning. But you've got to have something to start it. And so, you know, I guess the question is, how do we know if life will get started under a given set of conditions? Yeah, so once you've got something that's capable of making copies of itself, and all the copies are slightly different, some will flourish, some will die, natural selection will take over, and you get evolution. So you go from something like this, a cell, to a highly sophisticated life form such as Brian over here. Um, but how do you get something like this forming? And that's a real trouble. Because the simplest life forms that are capable of reproducing themselves now are bacteria. Viruses are simpler than bacteria, but viruses can't reproduce themselves. They need to subvert a human cell to make more copies of themselves. Bacteria look pretty simple compared to something like that, but in fact they're not. Bacteria are staggeringly, mind-blowingly complicated. To get a bacterium to work, to make a copy of itself, which is the minimum requirement for life, you need DNA, several types of RNA, you need enzymes, uh, you need cell walls and membranes, you need mitochondria. Each of these things, these chemical reactions that allow a bacteria to make a copy of itself, is incredibly long, complicated carbon molecules made up of huge chains of amino acids, proteins. And as any molecular biologist will tell you, the complexity of one of these things is just staggering. How do you form something like this in the first place? The standard theory is there's some sort of random chemical reaction, maybe in a stagnant pool sometime in the early Earth, a random chemical reaction produced something that was capable of reproducing itself, and then evolution kept going. But as astronomer Fred Hoyle famously said, the odds of a random chemical reaction producing a functioning bacteria is about the same as the odds of a whirlwind blowing through a junkyard and producing a fully functional Boeing 747. And it's actually much worse than that, because the number of moving parts in a Boeing 747 is of order tens of thousands. The number of moving parts in a cell is hundreds of millions. You can actually do the calculation. You can ask, let's say you've got all these amino acids and you have to arrange them in just the right sequence to make all that they fold up and become all the right proteins and enzymes and everything else, ribosomes that we need to allow a cell to reproduce itself. How many do you have to get in just the right order to make something that works? It's a bit like trying to write a book by just throwing down random letters. Uh, you can put up 10,000 random letters down and most permutations of that will not be a readable book. Yes. Likewise, you can take all these amino acids and throw them together in a random pattern and it turns out only about 1 in 10 to the power 400 of these arrangements mm. has got any chance of being a viable life form. So 1 so, in 10 to the 400. Yeah. So we have 10 to the 23 stars in the visible universe, but 10 to the 400 is a much, much bigger number than 10 to the 23. I mean, that's, that's like, means there's almost no chance then for life. So if like, this is the other argument. We've had that space is really, really big argument for why there must be life. But this is the uh, counter-argument, the life is really, really complicated argument. If the life is this complicated, it, it's an incredible fluke to get it going. Far more improbable than the number of stars out there. So then there's no chance for life. Yeah, we don't exist. Sorry. Ah, and yet we know here on Earth that almost as soon as life could start, about 3.6 billion years ago, life did start. I have walked amongst the stromatolites in Western Australia which are the things that exist now that are a lot, most like the first things that you know colonized the Earth and ended up putting oxygen into our atmosphere. So clearly, it could happen on Earth quite quickly. So you've got a kind of paradox. If you do the simple calculation, it looks like it's fantastically unlikely. But on Earth, almost as soon as the Earth had solidified, life seemed to get going. So I guess most biologists would think that there must be some way around this paradox. One, any life form we know today is so complicated it has almost no chance of forming randomly. Maybe there were some much simpler life forms. I'm not quite sure what, maybe RNA, uh, maybe just um, sacs of, or like a membrane with strange chemical buffered solutions inside them. There are many theories out there. Something we wouldn't recognize as a life form today, but it did crudely and primitively, it was able to reproduce itself. 
And once that happens, evolution was able to transform it over probably millions of years into much more sophisticated life forms like present day bacteria. But I think what we really want to know, of course, is whether or not it's intelligent life like you. Does evolution naturally lead to intelligence? So we started off with your know, slime molds and bacteria. Is it inevitable that evolution will lead to pinnacles of evolution, such as Brian here? Or let's say evolution reaches a pinnacle of evolution, such as this kangaroo, uh, and stops? Or maybe termites. We humans think that we are the dominant species on Earth, but in fact, if you look at which species eats most of the world's biomass, it's not humans, it's termites. So one could argue that termites are actually the dominant species on Earth, and humans are number two in the pecking order. Maybe intelligence is just an aberration, and most uh, planets' life would have evolved to something like a cockroach, very, very successful, adaptable organisms that can survive anything, and stay there. Maybe it's just a one in a billion fluke that actually produces being so clever they're capable of wondering about where they came from. So intelligence has, of course, not been here on Earth for very long. Some people doubt that it's even here yet today. But that seems to indicate a coincidence, which is our sun has a lifespan of about 10 billion years, and it's taken more than 4 billion years for what we would call ourselves, being intelligent beings, to evolve. And so that's kind of funny because this is something to do with nuclear fusion, and this has something to do with chemistry. Seems to me there's a bit of a coincidence here that's rather convenient. I mean, naively, if you did some calculation and tried to calculate how long a star would last, or how long it would take to evolve, these rely on totally different bits of physics, so you'd expect the answers to come out quite different. They're billions of times different, hundreds of orders of magnitude different. But in fact, within a factor of your two and a half, these are the same. Yeah, and there's also another issue, which is we've just come on board now, so it's kind of hard to know exactly how likely we are, isn't it? So, one could ask the question, how long on average would you expect it to take to intelligence to exist? And it could just be that if you do the two calculations, these are too complicated, we can't actually do the calculation, but let's say it was possible, you'd calculate that, oh yes, the time it takes to evolve life is about the same as a typical lifespan of a star like our own sun. But far more likely is that one will come up much bigger than the other. So let's say you did the calculation and it turned out that the time to evolve intelligence was much smaller than the lifespan of a sun, let's say 100 million years or 10 million years, rather than 10 billion. In that case, life would have got going intelligence a very, very long time ago. Yep. And it didn't. So you wouldn't have had a coincidence. The two numbers would have been quite different. We wouldn't be sitting here wondering about why are they the same. Yep. But let's take the other <clears> point of view. Let's imagine you did this calculation, and it turned out the time to evolve intelligence on a typical planet was actually a lot more than 10 billion years, say 100 billion years. In that case, on most planets, life would not have evolved intelligence. The star dies before it has a chance there'll only be a very tiny fraction of planets where life got going much faster than average. And when it did, this time would always be comparable to that time. Mm, so that's an indication that we are unusual. So if you believe that argument, I mean, it could just be coincidence just is a coincidence, they just happen to come out the same. But more likely, I think, is that in fact, this time is actually much larger and we are a fluke, because that naturally explains why the two are the same.